Hi, my name is Patrick Stewart. And, uh, you know, I always would like to do that as if it were, as if I were on, uh, you know, the radio. Okay. <laughs> that's your, that's please. Hello, my name is Patrick Stewart. Is that <laughs> it, it, fall, it always falls away, doesn't it? Anyway, and I, <laughs> I am so delighted oh. and honored oh. to be here because the last time we could have done this, I wasn't available. That's true. And you remember? I do. <laughs> have you held it against me? No, I haven't held it against you. You said you weren't available. And I said, that's too bad. And it was all planned and we were ready to go. And then I walked down the street and I saw you eating a delicious meal in a restaurant. <laughs> oh no. I thought that asshole. <laughs> and you saw me and I saw you duck down underneath the table. <laughs> no, you were very, you, it was not your fault. You couldn't make it, but you're here now. And I'm sure you're delighted to be Conan O'Brien's friend. Oh yes. Of course. <laughs> I knew I'd miss something, <laughs> but I thought, no, that's not important. That's so, a Freudian slip. That's what, what we call that a Freudian slip. You've got to keep all that's of this. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel proud, happy, honored to be Conan O'Brien's friend oh, God, and guest. God bless you, sir. <laughs> God bless you. I'm going to start by saying something I don't get to say often, which is, I think one of the last times I saw you, we kissed full on, on the lips. It was on my show, and I forget how it happened. Something was in the air that night. Come here! Dad! I've only kissed two men full on on the lips. One was you, the other was Mr. Ryan Reynolds. We did a piece where we did a parody of the a notebook. Pretty good track record. And yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I am killing it with the fellas. <laughs> yeah. And but uh, you, you, how, how you, do we compare? Well, <laughs> okay, I'll say this: you, I, I, my soul left my body. It was, a, it was an incredible experience to kiss you. Uh, you, you came around to my desk, and yeah. you grabbed my head, and it was a powerful kiss. Passionate. It, passionate. Yeah. Well, I think I can... wanted to demonstrate the authenticity of my feelings, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> yeah. this, I think, that's what was I told the police. Yeah. Of what. <laughs> <laughs> this is what um, something had happened between Ian McCullen and myself, yes, which included a kiss on yeah. the lips, yeah. And um, I think you brought that up and something about you know nobody has ever kissed you like that. And I, man, here we go, here we go. No, it was so fantastic. <laughs> I just put it out there, not thinking this is where we'd go. And suddenly, this man was up on his feet. He came around. He swept me off my feet. Powerful kiss. It's taking everything in my power not to say I've never been kissed like that. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't. Yeah, I won't, but... don't go near him. There's just I'm putting up a salad guard between the two of you. <laughs> you you got in you you your physicality changed like you were gonna do it, and then I got. <sighs> oh, I'm so excited. No, so Patrick was like a cobra rising up, looking at you. Do I? Do I not? But um, I have to say the one difference with uh with uh Ryan Reynolds is he has a technique, I guess, we're kissing, and it was a longer kiss. Yes. And you can look at it on video. It's a parody of The Notebook. He reaches over and he started fondling my ear. Oh. And I thought, uh, I just got a weird peek into Blake Lively's life yeah. at this moment. <laughs> it's very strange. Anyway, uh, welcome. Thrilled to have you here. You Thank are, you, you are, uh, uh You are a consummate actor. You've got, I believe, the greatest voice in the world. Uh, you've accomplished so much in your life and you've also written this book and I, man, you have lived a life. I will say that you have lived an incredible life and you've written about it beautifully in this book, which tells your story. And there's so much in here that I didn't know, starting with your childhood. You're such a good actor. You've gone through this transformation 
that I would never in a million years believe that you came from the North from very little means. I don't know how else to say it. What you would call, I think you refer to it in your book as sort of the rust belt of, of England. Mm -hmm. What's this area? What's it called? Well, it was the West Riding of Yorkshire, yeah. which is a, uh, it was a, a kind of division of Yorkshire. It's such a big county. Mm -hmm. It's the Texas of the UK. Right. And that it was divided into uh, North Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, and East Yorkshire. And then Margaret Thatcher came along mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> she created South Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. I think she was actually made Queen of South Yorkshire. I'm not quite sure of that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but she was. But it's. It's well known as an industrial center. Sheffield, of course, which was only a few miles away from where I grew up, was the steel center yes. of England, uh, probably of Europe at the time. But you talk about a childhood that's, and, and again, it's, you, you cannot judge a book by its cover, but I would have thought, well, you know, Sir Patrick Stewart, posh upbringing, posh education, uh, silver spoon in his mouth. That's those are the assumptions that I would have made, and uh, you just have to learn this lesson again and again and again in your life. Um, you had, in a lot of ways, a Victorian childhood. You had a child, and you talk about this in your book because that's what my wife has named it. My wife is a, an American from Nevada, and she will say to people if if they're asking me about how I grew up for the first time, she will say, oh, he might as well have been living in the 19th century. Right. <laughs> it's the like Dickensian. It, yeah. it, was, it was Dickensian, yeah. And um, I mean, you talk about, uh, first of all, no money, the, the very uh, end uh, toilet outside that you share with neighbors um, and a sort of an outbuilding. Not quite. The, the building yeah. had four toilets in it, right. but each family had their own toilet. Now, it was just a toilet. That was all. And there was no lighting, no heating, no running water except to flush the toilet. Yeah. And um, because we lived in what was called in our neighborhood a one up, one down, mm -hmm. there was one room downstairs. You stepped in off the pavement, sidewalk, mm -hmm. and you were in the living room of the house. And there wasn't anything else. There was a cellar downstairs, and you went upstairs, and there was one room upstairs. So one up, one down. And um, it was very, very basic. Yeah. I mean, the toilet aspect of it just being one of them. And uh, yeah. it wasn't really until I went to secondary modern school because I was not academic. <laughs> You're whispering, but there's still a very powerful microphone. You're whispering I into a microphone. <laughs> no one must know. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I, I, so we had no shower, we had no bath. What happened on a Friday evening was that my brother who and I, uh, my brother was five years older than mm -hmm. me. I had another brother, but he was 17 years old when he said he was gone. Mm -hmm. um, we would carry this zinc bath up from the cellar. I mean, these were, my father told us to do this. It was our job on a Friday evening. And we would have a, a big boiler that stood in the middle of the floor, a gas boiler, and that would boil the water for the bath. Then we would ladle the water out of the gas well, into the bath. And the first person to take the bath would be my father, because Friday night was the beginning of the weekend, yeah. which was often not a good thing in my house. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and then, uh, and then there was a whole complicated evening in which my elder brother would bathe in the same water that my father had used while the water was heating up again. Then he would empty that, and because he, he was made to do that, then he could leave for a Friday night himself, even though he was only, you know, 10 or 11. And um, then we, we emptied, <laughs> pailed the water. Actually, no, we didn't. We had a rubber tube. And we put the end of the rubber tube in the bath. Oh my God. And I would suck it up, which always meant that you would never. This is getting worse and oh. worse and worse. <laughs> Do you want to change the subject? No. No, go ahead. No. I could 
go downhill or I could go, go downhill. Down. Please, you're on the downhill podcast now. <laughs> this podcast original name was The Downhill.